Nom Nom delivers fresh food with whole ingredients, backed by veterinarian science. Science tells us that a dog's health starts in the bowl, so improving their diet is one of the best ways to help them live a long and happy life. Nom Nom's food is full of proteins your dog loves and the vitamins and nutrients they need to thrive. All you have to do is order, pour, and serve. Ready to make the switch to fresh? Order Nom Nom today. Go to https colon slash slash trinom.com forward slash curveball and get 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's https colon slash slash t-r-y-n-o-m dot com forward slash curveball. Plus, Nom Nom comes with a money back guarantee. If your dog's tail isn't wagging within 30 days, Nom Nom will refund your first order. No fillers, no nonsense, just Nom Nom. Welcome to the Living the Dream podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. achieve, achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, we're going to be talking to dark fantasy indie author, Rilo Ken. He's got a series in his debut novel, The Dragon's Flute. We're going to be talking to him about that and how he got started and his style of writing and everything like that. So, Rilo, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm I, uh, born in Seashell, B.C., Canada. Uh, I've lived a long life of writing poetry and an indisclosed name, and then eventually I was... Uh, got into writing a novel, which I had a marketer friend that decided that read it and thought, wow, uh, let's do something with this. So we joined up and um, last June, the Dragon's Flute was published through Amazon. Well, to tell everybody how, how you got into writing. Oh, I, uh, geez, I've been creative ever since I can remember learning how to write. I uh, I've come come from a musical background. My family's all artists and singers, and to writing this book, I uh, I don't know. I was just a hobby writer, so that escalated, of course, and that's about it. I I don't know much more to say. <laughs> well, who who are your big your big influences? What, what kind of books or different kind of styles that did you read that what you would say that inspired you to start writing? Um, I have to say I'm, I'm much of a, a science fi kind of guy. I, I've read a lot of uh, um, mostly the comics is growing up with Stan Lee and Jack Kirby and, uh, you know, of course, George Lucas, Gene Roddenberry got into all that stuff. But as far as the books and everything like that, I have to say uh, Douglas Adams was a huge inspiration. Um, Stephen King, Dean Koontz, which, you know, I mean, I read a lot of just different books. And which is kind of, I always get asked, well, how did I get into then writing fantasy? Because dragons and everything like that. And I just... I don't know. I just thought that that would be the easiest route to go to convey the story I had. So, but, you know, I've, uh, of course, been a huge fan of King Arthur and all the stories of the round table. That's had a huge inspiration for it. And then, of course, the Lord of the Rings was a major, major inspiration for it. Yes. That's all that. Yeah. So tell us, to, to tell the listeners uh, what kind of style, when they pick up your books, what kind of 
writing style do you have? Or, or what what classification are your books? They're dark fantasy. Um, you'll find uh, lots of Dungeons and Dragons, mythical creatures, and uh, a story that follows uh, a sorceress named Savita. And uh, it, uh, I don't know what to say about that. But, um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of goth, a lot of gore. It's uh, the dark fantasy genre, so there's, it's not going to be a child's book. It's uh, If you're into that kind of dragon slaying stuff, you'll enjoy this series quite a bit. So when you write, do you strive to be original or do you just give the readers w- w- what they want to read? I I write what I want to write. Um, um, yeah, I never, I, I, I write what I like. I project my emotions into words and I become each character as I write them. I feel that I, I'm in touch with what people want in that genre, and um, I I give them what they want to a small extent, but then I, you know, just to keep them in their comfort zone and everything, but I always keep people guessing, and I keep the reader trapped. So it's like a lot of people say they start reading it and then they just they can't put it down because they need to know what's going to happen next. Right. And I thought that was wonderful. But, yeah, that's all bad in a nutshell. Yes. OK, well, give give some tips on, on those who for those who are looking to overcome writer's block. Oh, uh, Writer's block is uh, it's, it's real. It's as real as any other form of anxiety. I mean, perfectionism being the root cause of writer's block. Uh, the inability to focus, um, lacking inspiration, stress, frustration. It manifests differently in every writer. I feel that it's more the pressure you're putting on yourself. For me, I will get to a point where. I want to, uh, you know, you just, you blocked, you don't want to do. So you just, you got to shut it down. You take your mind off. You got to do other things. Like I play guitar, or go for even a walk or a hike or clean the kitchen or do something that's just leaves your brain not even thinking about it. I mean, you, you need to let your subconscious work things out that way. So, yeah, the only advice to me for that would be to relax do something completely different and then come back to it. You'll be amazed at how easy things come together after you do take a break. Who do you base your characters on in your book? Do, do you base them on, on people that you know, or, or, or what are they based on? Um, yeah, a lot of them are. I mean, a lot of friends and people I've met over the years. Um, traveling into small towns and you always you always find characters that you uh you kind of use use notes on them and you put them all together into people but a lot of them a lot of my main characters are based on friends i grew up with and uh yeah i mean you need to tweak them a little bit of course uh you don't uh you know you can't send your average friend into war with a sword against a dragon, right? You have to <laughs> make them a little bit stronger. But yeah, yeah I use the, the good points in a lot of characters. And, you know, in the bad guys, a lot of them too are just, they're me infused with other characters and kind of mix and match. But yes, a lot of characters are based on friends. <laughs> Do you hide secrets in your book? that only a few people will find? Yes. Yeah, a lot of Easter eggs. <laughs> um, I, uh, a long time ago, we had an older guy that used to talk about a time that uh, it snowed in August. And every August, he'd come up with that story and a few of us would get a laugh out of it. So... In one of my characters, I had two of them explaining how it snowed in summer, and a few of my friends have picked that up, and they laughed that off. Um, I'm a huge fan of Douglas Adams, so uh, I have 
infused the number 42 in a couple areas, which what he explained was the secret to life in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxies series. Um, I did a little cameo of a very, very young Merlin that will make people kind of laugh it off. And yeah, yeah, there was a few ins and outs. I also have a friend, you know, out of fun that I made a character of. And we named him Farley, and that was an ongoing joke. And so he got uh, he got massively murdered and ripped to pieces. It was just a short little skit <laughs> that uh, those friends that would know these people would get a real kick kick out of. But yes. If if there was one thing that you could give up to become a better writer, what would that be? Well, it wouldn't be wine, I can tell you that. <laughs> um. Thing you give up, like be honest as a writer, you give up a lot. Uh, it's a lot of hard work. Your social life is minimal. You you give up everything, but it's rewarding. Um, because you're locked in your own world, and it it does get exciting as things form together. And then when you do get out there to sign your book or you meet people and talk about it, it's that's the rewards right there. But yeah, uh, it's not just one thing you give up. You give up a lot. Yeah. Okay. Well, t- tell everybody about your book and, and about your, your, your series. Tell listeners what they can expect when they read your book and about the series and where to pick it up at. Well, they would uh, pick it up in uh, Amazon and Kindle are selling them for now. And I hear next year they're going to be out in some Indigo Chapters bookstores, but that's still in the making. Um, It's a storyline of Savita Cosmos, who um, is part of the Kamalsh Order that are preventing evil from taking over Draconia and the multiverse. It's uh, a group of people that are, well, they're a dysfunctional family, really. So them getting together, they're unlikely heroes that have to work together in order to make everything work out. And um, the bad guys are very dark. And it's, it's, there's a lot of slaughter in it. There's a lot of mayhem and malice. It's uh, it's a fun ride. You'll uh, cheer on the heroes, hate the bad guys, love to hate the bad guys, <laughs> and uh, it's it's worth reading. <laughs> yeah, I'm not prepared for that question. Thanks. <laughs> Do you have any uh, uh, other upcoming projects that you're working on that people need to know about? I am all the way through the rough draft to book two of this series. Um, There's going to be five books in this series altogether, and uh, it should be coming out at the end of next year if things work out as well. So first of all, I have to, I'm going to be marketing this first one off and seeing how much cash that I get on it. It seems to be working well, made top, one there in uh, sales for Amazon in the first month, and um, it's getting a lot of good reviews. I'm so excited and thrilled about it. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a joy, right? Throw out your contact information so people can keep up with everything that you're doing. I'm on, uh, I'm on Instagram mostly. I have an account under Rilo Ken, and I do have Facebook and TikTok. But if you're gonna follow who and where I'm going, Instagram is the place to go. All right, so listeners, be sure to follow him on Instagram at Rilo Ken. Close us out with some final thoughts. Maybe something that I forgot to touch on that you would like to touch on, or any final thoughts you have for the listeners. Don't jump into my book thinking it's going to be a Disney classic 
It has all elements of a good fantasy novel, but you're going to go into a world of violence, into a world of chaos. And I'm going to drag you through that in order to figure out where it is that this story is going. I know if you're interested in uh, the dragons in the dark fantasy era, then um, then this is definitely going to be a fun ride for you. And, uh, please find me on Instagram. Um, I like talking to everybody. I message everybody that talks back to me. So, or ask me questions. I'm very open. Thanks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, check him out at Rallo Ken. Please be sure to follow, rate, review, share this episode to all of the dark fantasy fans out there. If you enjoy this episode or this podcast, please be sure to tell a friend. Rilo, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.